So part C says that find the acceleration of Q at time t equals 2. And secondly, is the speed of the particle increasing, decreasing, or neither at time equals 2? Okay, so first thing we're going to do is find the acceleration function. Okay, so the acceleration of Q, when I differentiate the V of T function, I'm going to end up with 2T minus 8. Okay, so that's the, that's the first part. Now, it says, is the speed of the particle Q increasing or decreasing or neither at time equals 2? Now, for speed to be increasing or decreasing, speed is not the same as velocity. Velocity has direction. So in order for speed to decrease, the velocity must be working against the acceleration or vice versa. The acceleration must be working against velocity. So we need to then just test the signs of the velocity at t equals 2. So there's my velocity function. So I'm going to find the velocity of the q at t equals 2. So plugging in 2, I get 4 minus 16 plus 15. That works out to be positive 3. So all we know there is that the speed is positive at t equals 2, and we know it's going in this direction. What we can work out with acceleration is that the acceleration of q at t equals 2 when I work, plug that in, I get 4 minus 8, or negative 4. What that means is that at t equals 2, the acceleration is working in this direction. So our velocity is going to the right, but we're accelerating to the left, which means we're slowing down. So what that means then is the speed of the particle q is decreasing. Okay, so then we can say that the speed is decreasing. And the reason is acceleration and velocity have opposite side. Okay, so there we go. That's our reasoning. So part D says find the position of particle Q for the first time it changes direction. So we need to know the time it changes direction is when the velocity is equal to zero. And it, we have to check both sides of it. So we tested it over here. Our zeros were at three and five. And we can see that the changing of direction is going to happen because we're going to the right on the left-hand side here. So we're going in this direction of t equals three. And then we change direction at three. So that's the first time we change direction. So at t equals 3, that's the first part. So we need to find the position, okay, so the, the position of the particle when it changes direction. So the first part of this is it changes direct change of direction occurs at t equals 3. Okay, so to find the actual position, we need to then find the, find the, write the function for position, which we'll call Q. And to find the position, we need an initial position, which I have here at t equals 0, and the, the position equals 5. So that's important that we, that we establish an initial condition. And then the, the displacement is going to be the area under the velocity curve from, of the v of q from 0 to whatever the t is. So solving for q of t, or 3, so the position at t equals 3, because that's a change of direction that occurs at t equals 3. That position then is going to be equal to, well, the starting position is 5. And we're going to find the area from 0 to 3 of the v function. And the v function, we're just going to anti-differentiate to find that. So 2t, 
t squared minus 8t plus 15 dt. Okay, so plugging this in, we're going to anti-differentiate, so we get t cubed over 3 minus 4t squared plus 15t, and we're going to find the displacement from 0 to 3. So this is equal to 5 plus, when I plug in 3, I'm going to end up with 27 divided by 3 is 9. 4 times t squared is negative 36. Plus 15t is going to be 45. Okay, that's going to be when t is equal to 3. And then t is equal to 0. It's going to have 0 position of 0. So our displacement, it looks like it's going to just, that we're going to end up with 9 plus 45 is 54 minus 36 is 18. So we have a displacement of positive 18. We started at the position of five, so our new position is at 23. So the position at t equals three, or when it, the first particle first changes direction, the time it first changes direction at t equals three, the position is gonna be 23 to the right. So looking at our mark scheme, for C, we just have to find the sign of the velocity in the acceleration, and we, have to, we just have to justify it at, with opposite signs, that it's slowing down. For part D, we have to, again, establish that t equals 3. We need an antiderivative and initial condition, and then the answer is going to be the value of 23, so that's equal to 1 point. Okay, so this is how our marks are going to be allocated for that for part C and D of question number five.